Firefighters around the country battled nearly 41,000 wildfires this year, leaving behind 4.1 million scorched acres. Restoring land destroyed by fire is critical, not only for the survival of the species dependent on it, but also for the prevention of future fires. Al Jazeera's Asha Qureshi met up with a group of scientists whose work begins after the fires are put out. When a wildfire ignites, containment is the first priority. Record high temperatures coupled with dry weather whipped up more than a dozen major wildfires in Colorado this summer. Crews battled blazes that scorched nearly 200,000 acres. So far this year, federal agencies have spent more than a billion dollars fighting wildfires nationally. But what once the fire is extinguished and the smoke is cleared could be the difference between fueling more wildfires or preventing them. Today we're headed just northeast of Grand Junction, Colorado, to the site of the June 2012 Pine Ridge wildfire. It was the largest this district has ever experienced. It burned about 14,000 acres in the course of a few days. One day in particular, 10,000 acres burned. And now all you can see is just the stumps. Andrea Kramer is a conservation scientist with the Chicago Botanic Garden. Her work focuses on improving restoration of areas like this after the ravages of wildfire. One of the issues after a wildfire like this is the, the problem with invasive species. One of the big ones around here is cheatgrass. Um, not only does it really do very well after a wildfire, but it's one of the things that helps cause or carry this wildfire farther than it would have otherwise. Before the presence of cheatgrass, the average fire cycle was anywhere between 40 to 100 years. But now ecosystems invaded by cheatgrass burn every three to five years. As cattle are introduced, it's more likely to be continued to be spread, and it can spread with just wind, water erosion as well. Restoring these decimated habitats is a critical step in reducing the severity and frequency of wildfires. It's one reason reseeding with hardy native plants is a top priority for the Bureau of Land Management. One way the BLM is doing that is through partnerships focused on the collection and mass production of native plant seeds. We're going to pull the seeds out, all right, because we're going to look and see if they are ready for collection. Okay, we pull these out. All right. Working with the Seeds of Success program, BLM botanist Carol Dawson and her horticultural squad of interns take to these Colorado fields to gather and ensure the next generation of plant. The Seeds of Success program is a program where we are collecting native seeds on BLM lands throughout the West and the idea is that we would put the seed into seed storage so it'll be viable for a couple hundred years. Ideally the team's goal is to collect between 10 and 20,000 viable seeds each time they go out. They'll also inventory all the native plants they find in these foothills for future use. The seeds are then sent to various national seed banks, like this one at the Chicago Botanic Garden for long-term storage. Well, seed banking is one of the most rational things we can do with a changing climate, with the threats that plants are facing out in the wild. It's a wonderful way to preserve plants for the long term. Once they're properly dried and packaged and stored at minus 20 degrees Celsius, they can last up to 200 years. In this lab, about 1,500 different collections representing several thousand species are banked. In total, more than one million different seeds are preserved here in case they're ever needed for reproduction and restoration. Most people aren't aware of the scale, the millions of acres that burn every year, the millions of pounds of seed that have to go out. Um, a lot of times that's sown by helicopter because these areas are inaccessible. Um, dropping vast quantities of seed on this scorched earth um, with the hopes that it will come back and be a thriving native plant community in the future. It's a deposit made by plant scientists and environmental agencies that could protect human and wildlife in the absence of a rainy day. That was Al Jazeera's Asha Qureshi.